Mutualisms are interactions between two or more individuals from different species in which all of the participating partners derive a net benefit from. In fact, the world as we know today is probably reshaped by mutualistic interactions, some very famous ones including mycorrhiza and acacia mutualisms and plant pollinator interactions. Plant pollinator interactions are extremely important because many of the fruit that we consume daily, for example kiwi, squash and watermelon, depend on the help of pollinators carrying pollen from one flower to the next and thereby fertilizing the latter. But how does the plant reinforce that the pollinator keeps coming back? Well, most of the plants produce a reward to pay the pollinator for its service, for example pollen or nectar. Thus, the plant benefits from the pollinator because it ensures the reproductive success of the plant and in turn the pollinator gains food reward. Both are satisfied. But the plant, contrary to the self-serving pollinator, has to invest something into the mutualism, for example sugar for nectar production. In the light of this investment and its probable cost, one question that remains is how is this mutualism kept upright? We must assume that the benefits of producing a reward that supplies the pollinator with food outweighs the costs, but this must be tested. Plant pollinator interactions are suitable systems as plant fitness can be measured relatively straightforward, for example by counting the number of seeds produced per capsule. In our study we are investigating what would happen if a plant reduces its investment and offers less to the pollinator than its parental plant, but displays a phenotype that is virtually indistinguishable for the pollinator. We are using Petunia axillaris and one nectar-dependent pollinator, the nocturnal hawkmoth Manduca sexta, as our system of choice. One possibility to analyze the pollinator response to a plant with reduced investment would be to manually extract nectar from Petunia axillaris. However, this would neglect the cost that the plant already had paid to produce the nectar. Therefore, we created a petunia with reduced investment, meaning a reduced nectar production, by more sophisticated means. That means by crossing with a close relative, petunia integrifolia, and multiple backcrossing with, with its parental plant, petunia axillaris. By following the breeding program, we integrated a low nectar locus from the close relative into the genetic background of Petunia axillaris and created a low nectar line with less than 65% nectar than the parent. The measurement of the morphological parameters revealed that except for nectar volume there was hardly a difference between the low nectar line and Petunia axillaris. So we used this line to test the pollinator behavior on plants with reduced investment. Pollinators that face this cheating petunia did not reduce the number of flowers visited on the plant, as can be seen in this figure. Also, when we replenished the low nectar line with nectar, the number of flowers visited by pollinators stayed the same. When the hawk moth started to probe on the flowers containing less nectar, the betrayal became apparent quite quickly. The pollinators reduced their probing time significantly in comparison to the parental plants. In the control experiment, which you can see on the right hand side, when nectar was replenished in the low nectar line, this difference was eliminated. So pollinators discriminate after they probed into the flower. But is the fitness of low nectar plants affected? Subsequently, we did experiments where we analyzed the seed set as one proxy of plant fitness of the low nectar line in comparison with the original. We hand pollinated both lines and had pollination realized by a hawk moth. In this figure you can see that in hawk moth pollinated assays, the low nectar line produces significantly less seeds than the parental plant. The potential of the low nectar plant to produce seeds is actually higher than Petunia axillaris, which was confirmed by hand pollination. So low nectar plants seem to be less fit. Is drinking time the variable that maintains the mutualism? In the following figure we correlated seed set with the time the pollinator drank on the plant and it is in fact positively correlated. This confirms our assumption that drinking time determines how many seeds a petunia flower can produce. 
So the reason why petunias don't cheat on the pollinators might be relatively simple. The pollinators adjust their drinking time according to the offer available and this in turn affects the fitness of the plant. With this study we were able to demonstrate how in a simple plant-pollinator interaction the mutualism can be maintained.